What's up everybody, it's Taylor, and today I wanted to give you my final thoughts on the 3DS RPG Bravely Default. Now, I really wanted to do a full review, you know, script, write it down, like really collect my thoughts in an organized way, but unfortunately, um, actually, fortunately, I got a couple of review codes sent my way, one expected, one very unexpected, and I want to give the, the games that I get review codes for priority. So instead of, you know, taking time to put more, a little bit more effort into this one, I just want to give my final thoughts out there, share my opinions, and, uh, you know, let's get the conversation going about the game. And uh, so for those of you who don't know what Bravely Default is, it is a uh, 3DS exclusive RPG developed by Silicon Studio and published by uh, Square Enix in Japan and then Nintendo in America. And a lot of people think that, this, oh, this is Square Enix kind of returning to their roots because it's kind of a very classic JRPG, you know, world map, turn-based combat system, even uses a lot of Final Fantasy uh, lingo like Phoenix Down and Potion and things of that nature. And it, uh, it, was, I've, it was pretty much everything I wanted it to be. And it kind of blew me away with how good it was. Um, you know, the basic story is there's these four crystals, um, and they all kind of go out, and there's guardians for each crystal called the uh, Vestals. And basically all of them are wiped out except for one. And, uh, you know, so she goes on this journey with the main character. I guess it, the cast of four of them is the main cast, but I guess you start off as Tiz, uh, whose town kind of got destroyed in this uh, little calamity. And he has no nowhere to go, and so he's like, hey, you know, please let me go with you and uh, help you restore these crystals. And they pick up a couple other people along the way. Uh, Ring a bell, who's kind of like a wannabe ladies' man. He's got this journal that somehow always be, is able to predict the future. And then you have uh, Adia, who's kind of like, um, I don't know, she's kind of funny. I, I think she's got like, I kind of got an attitude on her. And uh, she's the daughter of either like a king or a general or somebody very important on the opposing side of your conflict. Um, but I feel like the, the interplay between them all is really great. Uh, most of it's fully voice acted, and there's some pretty good voice acting. Um, all recognizable voice actors, at least I could tell. Uh, Tiz was played by uh, the same person that played uh, the main character in Tales of Graces F, whose name is totally uh, Asbel. Whoever played Asbel is the same guy. And then Aaron Fitzgerald, who played uh, Chie from Persona 4 Golden, is doing uh, the, the main girl. Oh, I can't remember her name right now. The Wind Vessel girl. I'm, I'm going to put it up on the screen. I, I can't believe I'm forgetting it right now. Um, but anyway, yeah, just the journey they go on is really interesting. I, I kind of liked how the story progressed and these different characters that you would meet along the way. Uh, some of them were funnier than others, but uh, overall was interesting. And they weren't long-winded. That's what I really loved. Some JRPGs have a tendency to get really long-winded in the story segments. But these uh, were pretty short and sweet in a good way, though. You were interested in knowing what was going on, and it didn't get all crazy with a super complex story or like way over the top dialogue that went on and on and on. It just it was the perfect amount of dialogue. And then it did something very akin to Tales where um, it did those little kind of character portrait, like optional dialogue boxes that weren't voice acted, which adds a bit to the, to the uh, story if you want, but totally optional, which was great. So now let's go on to some of the, what I feel like are the defining features of Bravely Default and I think what a lot of people really, really enjoyed about the game. Um, now one, it's not really a, uh, anything new or crazy, but it's it's bringing back that classic Final Fantasy and that's the job system. Uh, as you defeat bosses through the game, uh, most bosses are, are a job, like a knight or a ninja or something along those lines. And as you defeat them, you have the ability to, to uh, use that job and you know level up those abilities and much like Final Fantasy Tactics as you Level up a certain job and you learn their abilities. You can say like for example uh, You can be a pirate but have you know knight abilities or be a red mage and use ninja abilities or things of that nature You can kind of mix and match as you want I love the flexibility of that the characters don't get locked down to a certain class You can build it however you want and uh, I love the flexibility of that it was great I, uh, it was always exciting to kind of fight a new boss and kind of experiment with the class to see what they could do. Um, and admittedly, there are some better than others, like the ninja, which can attack twice no matter what, regardless if you're using uh, the brave feature, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, 
but there are you know the hunter i really like the hunter slash it's kind of like an archer class um, and there's like a lancer class called the valkyrie i believe and i don't know there was just a good variety and i really enjoyed it um and yeah and so the the other um feature that's new to this game it's pretty much new to rpgs for the most part um and it's basically the the reason why the game is called bravely default is the brave and default system so at any time you have the option of uh, going of defaulting which basically will let you block but the next turn you gain an extra attack or you can you store an attack so you can use it whenever you want um, and then brave lets you go an additional time um, so like for example like you start out with like one action per turn but if you want like oh I really need to do a lot of damage right now I'm gonna brave three times and attack four times this turn however you'll then have to wait an additional three turns to kind of let your, um, I guess your turn meter recharge itself. Um, so it, it allows a lot of flexibility. So you can, you know, store up these turns. If you're like, okay, I'm gonna save up some turns and throw out a really big attack, or if you, you know, you just want to always be uh, defaulting and then braving uh, so you can attack twice. There's, there's a lot of flexibility in that. Again, I'm gonna be using this word a lot because that is what I love about this RPG. Is there's so much flexibility. So yeah, that was that's a really great feature, and there's a lot of strategy in it because it's like, how do you want to use it? Do you want to save it? Um, you know, like oh, the boss might almost be dead, so let's go all out and try to kill it. Or you could, you know, play conservative and save up turns and just kind of do it the normal way. And uh, and the other thing is, uh, again, the flexibility. This might be my favorite feature in the game, um, and that is the ability to adjust the encounter rate. So normally. Uh, JRPGs have random battles that you can't predict. They're just, you'll be running around and like, boom, you'll run into a battle. Or, you know, if it's like a Tales game, you'll see it on the battlefield and then it'll take you into like a little battle zone. Uh, but in Bravely Default, it's like a classic JRPG. You'll just run into uh, a battle and you won't see it coming, unless it's a boss, of course. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that can be annoying if you're in a dungeon and you're like really low on life and you want to run back to town and, you know, oh, I need to get some more supplies or I want to rest up. But what Braille Default allows you to do, you can crank it either way. You can take it down to half, excuse me, you can take it down to a half encounter uh, or all the way to zero. So if you're like, man, I just want to run back to town, you can turn the encounters completely off and you can just run back to town or you're like, screw this. I don't want to fight the guys in the dungeon. Just want to get to the boss and get out of here. You can do that. Or on the flip side, if you really need to grind, you can turn it up to 200% and you'll encounter guys even faster. So you're like, okay, I'm about to fight a boss or oh, this boss is kicking my butt. So let me grind a little bit. That way you don't have to waste time trying to get into a random battle. You'll just be able to do it whenever you want. And I love, love, love this feature. What I really love about it is it respects your time. Me personally, uh, as a 20 year old adult, I don't always have, you know, like a big chunk, four to six hours to play a game. Sometimes it's only an hour. And so, you know, I don't want to waste my time running into random battles if I don't have to, or like, gosh, I got to run back to town or whatever. And it's really hard to go back to play some of these PS1 RPGs now, uh, now that they don't have this feature. Because it's like, oh, I just want to run back to town. Oh, crap, I got to run through all these random battles and it's going to waste my time. But again, the name of the game for Bravely Default, at least for me, is flexibility uh, to just play the game how you want. And I love that. I just absolutely love that. It lets you play the game however you want. It's absolutely fantastic. So as for the presentation, it's uh, it's kind of got this really cool watercolor art style to it. And, um, you know, obviously it's a 3DS game. It's not going to look as good as, you know, really even the PS2 game uh, or a PS3 game for that matter. But I feel like there's a certain charm to it. It's kind of got an old school look to it with the minimalistic graphics. And it's got that pre-rendered background. Oh gosh, the pre-rendered background. It really brought me back to the PS1 days when you walk into a town and it's got that certain feel to it. You, you, you just know what it looks like when you see it. And some people won't like that. Everything needs to be rendered in real time. But for me, I love the pre-rendered backgrounds. I love how it looks. It brings me right back to those PS1 RPG glory days and it looks fantastic. And the soundtrack, whew soundtrack i'm sure you've been hearing it as i've been talking i've got it on in the background it's wonderful absolutely wonderful super charming um i can't tell you the name of the guy it's off the top of my head um but i'll put it on the screen again but they did the theme song for attack on titan these guys are on a roll they just do some of the best music some of it's like super 
you know, like gets you pumped up to do the battles, and then it's like super charming and relaxing when you're in a town or when you're on the menu screen or in the world map. This is one of the very best JRPG soundtracks, and that's really, really saying something when you have Nobu Uematsu doing a ton of the classic Final Fantasies, or um, you know, the guy that did Chrono Cross, Yoshitaki Amano, I believe his name is. No, no, not Yasunori Mitsuda. I believe his name is Sonori Mitsuda. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I might be correcting myself again on the video, but I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Uh, he did Chrono Cross and Xeno Gears, uh, a bunch of other games that have a really great soundtrack. Yeah, so to kind of just wrap up my thoughts, this was a very, very pleasant RPG that I put a ton, a ton, a ton of time into. Um, the only drawback I feel like in the game is the dungeon design. The dungeons are very, very repetitive. It's just like, oh, it's kind of a maze. You go up floors, a maze, go up some floors. There, there's not really even a palette swap. It's all kind of the same thing. And then, of course, uh, for anybody that's gotten this far, the infamous Chapter 5. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't gotten this far, but that is a real downfall and a big, big complaint. I know I've seen a lot of people say they just quit at that part of the game, which is a real shame because this game had a lot of charm to it and it had a lot of potential to be like an amazing, amazing game. And it is an amazing game and I totally recommend you buying it if you have a 3D, 3DS. It's a total no-brainer, must buy. Um, but that is one of those parts where you're either going to stop playing or you're going to have to power your way through it. And when you get there, you'll know what I mean. Anyways, guys, I didn't have time to cover every little detail in Bravely Default. I just kind of wanted to talk about the features that stood out to me and share my thoughts with you guys and get the conversation going in the comments. So let me know what you thought of Bravely Default if you've picked up the game. And if you haven't, uh, I highly recommend it. It's totally worth it. You're going to get 30, 40 plus hours out of the game. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you next time.